Here we're going to look at the notion of differentiability of a multivariable function and give some examples. So let's look at the definition first. So a function of two variables, x and y, is said to be differentiable at a, b if for all points near a, b we have this expression for the function f of x, y equals f of a, b plus the partial derivative with respect to x evaluated at a, b times x minus a, b plus the partial derivative of y evaluated at a, b times y minus b plus this remainder function which I'll call r of x, y. And furthermore, this remainder function satisfies the following limit. So the limit as x, y approaches a, b of the remainder function over the square root of x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals zero. So let's see why this is the right definition. Well, first of all, notice that everything here up to the remainder function, that's the equation of the tangent plane of uh, the surface z equals f of xy at the point xy. So uh, like I said, all of this right here is some sort of tangent plane. And what this is saying is if we define this function r to be the difference in the actual function and the tangent plane, which is some sort of linear approximation, then that function r is approaching zero more quickly than this denominator is approaching zero. Okay, so uh, the next thing I wanna do is take this equation and write it in its vector form to motivate kind of an invariable version of this. So let's go ahead and take f of xy and we'll say this is f of ab plus f sub x of ab x minus a plus f sub y of ab y minus b plus this remainder function r of xy. So we're assuming that f is differentiable at ab and we have this sort of expression. But now the next thing we can do is notice that this is f of a, b plus, but all of this right here can be visualized as the dot product of two things. And it's the dot product of the vector f sub x evaluated at a, b, f sub y evaluated at a, b with the vector x minus a, y minus b. And then we still have this remainder function, which I'll just call r. Okay, great. But the next thing to notice is that this is equal to, I'll just bring this function down, this is exactly the definition of the gradient of f evaluated a, b, dot, and now notice that this is the vector made of x, y minus the vector made of a, b. Great. And then again, plus the remainder function. Okay, so that motivates this vector form of this definition for invariables. So let's look at that. I've left out some of the words, but we say that f of x is differentiable at a point a in Rn if f of x equals f of a plus the gradient of f evaluated at a dotted with this uh, vector difference. So we've got x minus a plus this remainder function. And again, here we can have this limit. So notice this guy down here is really just the magnitude of this vector. And so that motivates this happening in the denominator down here. So you want this limit to be zero. Okay, I'm gonna clean up the board. Then we're gonna do two examples, one with two variables and one with three variables. All right, for our first example, we're gonna show that this polynomial, f of x, y equals two x squared minus four y is differentiable at the point two minus three. Okay, so notice in this case, we're going to take our remainder function, r of x, y, so that's going to be equal to f of x, y minus the quantity f of two minus three plus f sub x evaluated at two minus three times x minus two plus f sub y evaluated at two minus three times uh, y plus three. And then finally, um, that's it. Great. So now we need uh, each of these components. So notice that here, f sub x is going to be equal to four x. You know, given that that's the partial derivative and we're viewing y as a constant here. And then um, f sub y is going to be equal to negative 4. Again, given the fact that x is a constant and we're taking y to be the variable.
Okay, so now we can replace f of x, y with our function. So this is going to be 2x squared minus 4y. And then from that, we're subtracting this function evaluated at 2 minus 3. So what do we get for that function evaluated at 2 minus 3? So that's going to be 2 times 4, which is 8. And then plus 12, so that'll be 20. Okay, good. And now notice if we take the derivative with respect to x, we get 4x, evaluate that at 2 minus 3. So that's going to be uh, 8. Great. And then we have that times x minus 2, and then plus f sub y. Well, there's no variable left, so that's just going to be minus 4 times y plus 3. So we got something like that going on. Now, uh, let's go ahead and break the parentheses and combine like terms. So notice we're going to get 2x squared, um, and then we will also have... This minus 4y is going to cancel with this minus 4y because we're subtracting them. So I'm just going to go ahead and scrub those out. And then we'll have uh, minus 20 minus 8x plus 16. And then finally, uh, that's going to be plus 12. So we've got something like that going on, but notice that's exactly equal to 2x squared uh, minus 8x, and then let's see what's left over, plus 8. Great. Then the next thing to notice is that this is exactly twice um, x squared minus 4x plus 4, which is exactly twice times x minus 2 quantity squared. Okay, but now we can go ahead and take the limit as x comma y approaches 2 comma minus 3 of r of xy over this uh, square root thing. So that's going to give us twice uh, x minus 2 quantity squared over the square root of x minus 2 squared plus uh, y plus 3 squared. Really, it's y minus minus 3 squared, but that's what you get. Okay, great. Now we're going to do a little bit with the squeeze theorem here. So the first thing to notice is that uh, this quantity is always uh, positive. And we can see that because the numerator is something squared and the denominator is the square root of some stuff squared. So that's also always positive. And then the next thing that we can do is notice that this is less than or equal to the same thing, but where we get rid of this y plus 3 squared in the denominator. And so why are they the same after doing that? Well, that's because we're making the denominator smaller, which makes the whole thing larger. So this gives us the limit as xy approaches 2 comma minus 3 of twice x minus 2 quantity squared over the square root of x minus 2 uh, quantity squared. So we get something like that. But now the next thing that we can do is notice that this is equal to twice the limit. And I'll just leave out the xy going to 2 minus 3 for room. And then we can cancel some things. Notice we're, we'll get a square root of x minus 2 quantity squared in the numerator after canceling that out. But that very, very clearly goes to zero, which is what we need it to do in order for this thing to be differentiable. Okay, so uh, we're finished with this example. I'll clean up the board and we'll do a three variable example. Okay, for our next example, we'll focus on this function. F of x, y, z is x squared plus y, z. We're gonna show that thing is differentiable at the point one comma two comma three. Okay, so we need to look at our remainder function. And so notice our remainder function, again, it's always going to be the original function minus the equation of the tangent plane at that point. Um, okay, and that even occurs in three or more variables as we can see down here. So that's going to be equal to the original function f of x, y, z minus the quantity f evaluated at 1, 2, 3 plus f sub x evaluated at 1, 2, 3 x minus 1 plus f sub y evaluated at 1, 2, 3 y minus 2 uh, plus f sub z evaluated at 1, 2, 3, z minus 3. Okay, great.
That's what we get for our remainder term. So let's see what we have for that. So that's going to be x squared plus yz and then minus the quantity. What do we get if we plug one, two, three in there? So if we plug one in there, we get one plus six. So that's going to be seven. And now let's go ahead and calculate these partial derivatives real quick. So notice that uh, f sub x is equal to 2x, f sub y is equal to z, and then f sub z is equal to y. And so those are pretty simple partial derivatives. So we're going to have the partial with respect to x evaluated at 1, 2, 3. So notice that's going to give us 2 because there's only an x value to plug in. So we have plus 2 times x minus 1. And then next, we're going to have f sub y evaluated at 1, 2, 3. So notice f y is z. We're going to evaluate that at z equals 3. So that's going to give us 3 times y minus 2. And then finally, plus 2 times z minus 3. So we get something like that. Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead and break all the parentheses on the right. So all of these, I should say, and then we'll simplify as we can. So this is x squared plus yz minus z, and now we have plus 2x minus 2 plus 3y minus 6 plus 2z minus 6. Okay, so is that right? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So now, notice that this 7, this minus 2, this minus 6, and this minus 6, what are those going to add up to? So minus 6 minus 6 is minus 12, minus 14, so plus 7 is going to give us a minus 7. So here we've got a minus 7 on the interior here. Great. Which means when we distribute this minus sign, we'll get a plus 7. So let's see what we have now. And I'm going to put these uh, in a slightly different order. So I'm going to write this as uh, x squared plus 2x plus 7. We're going to have plus yz minus uh, 3y minus 2z. Okay, so that is everything. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take this 7 and split it into 1 plus 6, like that. And now we can notice that this term can be factored and this term can also be factored. So notice that is going to factor to x uh, plus, sorry, this should be a minus 2x. So notice that can factor to x minus 1 quantity squared, and this one factors to uh, y minus 2 times y times z minus 3. Okay, good. So we've got something like that going on for our remainder function. Now let's go ahead and take the limit as uh, x, y, z goes to 1, 2, 3 of the remainder function, which we just found was uh, x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 and then z minus 3 all over um, the square root of x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z minus 3 squared. And instead of finding this limit directly, I want to go ahead and find um, the absolute value of this limit. But let's go ahead and notice that um, this thing is bigger than or equal to zero, so that sets up our squeeze theorem. And actually, we're kind of running out of room, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll find this limit on the next board. Okay, so we left off at this point. We're finding the limit of this absolute value, which is the absolute value of the remainder function over this distance between x, y, and z, and one, two, and three. So we took that absolute value so that we could set up a squeeze theorem. This thing is bigger than or equal to zero. Now the next thing we wanted to do is use the triangle inequality. So let's just recall over here what the triangle inequality is. So it says uh, the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. So I'll let you guys look that up um, if you have any questions about it. Uh, it's not too hard to find a lot of information about the triangle inequality. And so what we'll do is we'll apply that with this uh, plus sign and then we'll be able to split this up a little bit. So this is going to be less than or equal to the limit. I'm going to stop writing what my bounds are just for space um, and that's going to give me uh, 
the absolute value of x minus 1 squared, but that thing's always positive, so I don't need that. Um, and then I'm going to put all of this over x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z minus 3 squared, and then plus absolute value of y minus 2 times z minus 3 all over the same thing. So I have the square root of x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z minus 3 squared. Okay, so I've used my triangle inequality and just like arithmetic of fractions in order to split that up. Now I'm going to do a very, very similar trick to what we did in the last um, case, and that is in each of these fractions, I'm going to go ahead and um, eliminate parts of the denominator, which is going to make the denominator smaller, which makes the whole thing larger. So notice this is bigger than or equal to the limit um, as, well, x, y, z goes to 1, 2, 3 of x minus 1 squared over the square root of x minus 1 squared. Okay, good. So I've eliminated this guy and that guy, and I've created something that is larger, because again, the denominator is smaller, plus absolute value of y minus 2 times absolute value of uh, z minus 3 over um, the square root of y minus 2 squared. Okay, so we've got something like that going on. Now, the next thing that we can notice is that this guy right here is really just the absolute value of y minus 2, which allows us to cancel this absolute value of y minus 2 in the numerator and the denominator. And furthermore, I can reintroduce my absolute values here, and then notice that this is really just the absolute value of x minus 1 which allows me to cancel this x minus 1 in the denominator by changing this to a first power in the numerator. So what we have is this is less than or equal to the limit of the absolute value of x minus 1 plus the absolute value of z minus 3, but that limit is clearly 0. So that proves that this function is continuous at the point 1, 2, 3. That's a good place to stop. So in the next video, we will prove that if a function is differentiable, then it's continuous.